Hello and welcome to 7F5 Hour Live on Instagram. This is the 53rd episode of this series. It is the 28th of September, 2022, currently 2.45pm on a cloudy Wednesday afternoon here in Singapore. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're watching this live or as a recording. My name is Stephanie Jennifer, I am a CZT21 and I'll be your host for this session. In just a bit, I'll be joined by my co-hosts Debbie New, CZT18, and Susan Yeo, CZT Asia 2. We're so happy to have you here today. Hi Debbie. Hi Susan. Hi. Hello. Hi. Is my here. sound? I'm not sure if you can hear my fan. No, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. So, in these weekly Wednesday uh, lives on Instagram. We go through the challenges on uh, 7 of 5 Arch Challenge Group. It's a group on Facebook. You can find it by going to this link or uh, looking for 7 f 5 Arch Challenge in your Facebook search bar. It's free to join. You just need to answer some security questions so that we know that you're not a bot. Yeah, we'd we'll love to have you there. It's uh, also the official group for Intova Tangles. Uh, um, a daily tangling challenge starting in October. If you'd like to watch a recording of today's session, you can watch it on 7F5R Studios Instagram account at 7F5R Rivers or also on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash 7F5R Studio. You can find Debbie at tangled.pursuits. Susan is at susanyo.czt. And I am at halfpen underscore will draw. We're so happy to have you here today. Please take out some of your tangling supplies. Then go along with us for the next hour and a half, perhaps two hours. Yeah, we'll see what we can create together. So, Susan, what are you using today? Okay, today I'm using a schedule, a watercolor schedule that given by Studio or Debbie. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, uh, I also have one. Studio, the potentate. Yeah, one. mine is a uh, light blue. Uh, so I think I only use few pages. So I think I should <laughs> complete the, it. The, so the the black one is... this. The black one. Which black one? Oh, the, the, the one <laughs> still a lot of spaces. Oh, exactly. The handmade book, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so mm, one by one, once a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm. this is the page that I already tinted using the magical. The, in the blue. I, I, I didn't write down what color I use. Yeah. So uh, it's two pages. Then I also prepared my uh, PN pens, which is a black, blue, black, or black, blue. Then the black <laughs> and the sepia. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, then okay. also uh the color pencil. Yeah, that's all. Studio body for us, but then you need the pen. Mm. <laughs> very, yeah, very good. Very good. I am using a Strathmore colored art paper. This is 150 GSM. I cut it down to apprentice tile sized. And then I will be using some glitter pens on it. So I have with me some pens by, uh, I think this is Pentel. Yeah, Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallic Pens. Uh, I have, I think, two with me. And then I might use silver and white as well. Yeah. And then I also have this towel. Because I don't know how quickly I'm going to finish this. I have this towel started by Debbie. She, she added some tangles to the side. And I thought that uh, today's featured tangle fit nicely in this little band. So we'll see what I create. How about you, Debbie? I tried to tell Steph that that was a new tangle, but she didn't uh, see that it was a new tangle. Mm. What yeah, she say? felt she felt that is um. What do you say? What skinny drawings? But it's not. It's drawn in a continuous stroke, so the entire thing is just one stroke. Uh -huh. Skinny drawings. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, you publish it. I'm not. Say, I'm not the Zentangle police. Not say I say then you cannot publish it. Can we go ahead? So what? What? How are you using Debbie? Uh, so I'll see how much time I have. 
But uh, I have a couple of postcards here. So I have... Uh, they are in a bit of a what sort of shape. I don't know why they are not flat. But So these are postcard blanks that uh, we buy a lot of in Singapore. So these are magicals. I think this is uh, the Totally 80s series. And then this one is probably a mix of... Um, Hydrangea blue and sweet violet purple teal. So magical towels. And I have a couple of um, Zentangle ink towels with Zentangle decals. Hello? Finish? <laughs> you must suddenly you must cut out. Something, you must say something like, yeah. So the people know that you finish, you know? So why must I say, yeah? Because sometimes when I thought you finished, then I cut in, then you're like, I haven't finished. <laughs> yeah, because you always cut in. That's okay. that's her 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 trademark. Susan, come <laughs> share today's string. Today, okay, everything so the string. Mm, but the string is very simple, so no worry. Okay. Hey, the string very simple. Yeah, simple start with S. So no. today. <laughs> It's a simple string with S. Okay, so if you put your tiles, for example, diagonally, the S will be in this way, or you want to have in this way. Okay, why any it, kind why, of S. Why hmm? is it S? Why is it S? Mm. Mm. They have no reason, but just <laughs> I'm thinking of mm, what are the, the alphabet that I can use it for a string? So it comes with the S. Right? Is it? I can't yeah, remember. So we we use I think two S. S. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah mine. Mine's okay. So we use it again. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, I saw Steph the like the Superman S. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It? The first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight lines. Is it Superman or Super Any Steph? Any with water. Can. Supergirl. Yes. Super. Super girl. Super nonsense. <laughs> then there'll be N real. S N. S N. Okay, so I do I continue with the tango? <laughs> yes, please go ahead. Oh, okay, you can delegate so, the staff. Uh, ask staff to do. No, no, no. no uh, last minute, I, I worry that. I try skyping today. <laughs> that is okay, tough. why is it? Skyrim. Why is it called huh? Camry? So, so it's yeah, S for this... skiving. Ah. Mm, Why is it called Camry? Yeah, there's, a, a there's a story for this naming, yes. Because uh, this is the uh, tango uh, deconstructed by a group of uh, Malaysian CDT, Michisu, mm. Jen Yo, Kit Lo, and also Yen Chu. Yes. Kit Lo is actually my, my classmate for the seminar. Yeah. Uh, all of them are from KL. So in an event that we have uh, into different groups so they are in one group they are taking one photo then uh, do the deconstruction uh, project so this is the one that they did so this is come from a, a wristband a flower wristband from uh, Cambodia so oh. the place is Siam Reap Cambodia so when they name it they say okay the Cambodia camp then the rib behind so it becomes the, the camp rib they even come up with a Chinese name for this Thai Li okay yeah, so this is a really uh, interesting tangle. So I will demo now. <clears throat> yeah. So you will need to start with an orb. Okay, this is the original one. Then uh, by following the, the curved line, then we there's a line extended out. Either to the left or to the right first is up to you. So the second line, it will come from Maybe uh, apart from the ops, then come down. Then another partial ops. If let's say you want to have a full, you can also do that. So we continue and repeat the same step. This is quite interesting. Like It also looks like a, a person that the head and the two arms that open. <laughs> okay. So until you, you find that it is uh, enough for you, so you ended it with the last op here. Okay, then we are going to close this line. 
by a curvy line or a be a C curve. It's up to you. Or you want to make it like a muka, a wavy kind of a line, you can do that. Okay, so we have done for this one. So if I say you want to maybe have some embellishment or some changes or variation of the ops, you can turn it become a flower. Like what I uh, show in the Tea Tangle Tuesday in the group, there's a flower kind. Uh, so you can try to make it to become a border tangle or a very organic that flourishing tangle. You can do that. It depends on how you form the uh, com during the composition of this one. Okay, so we are going to do this camera in our string S. I keep it around the tangle. Mm. Then I realized, right, you can actually make it more linear. So if let me see whether I can recreate. If you continue your line from the point of the previous segment, right? You can actually make it more of a linear tangle. It looks like a larvae. Or oh, fish. I always thought it looked like fish. Yeah. Fish. Oh, you can do that. Maybe one of the one that the, the fin is longer, then it becomes real fish. Yeah, so you know, is... you know the other way that you do it reminds me of like a wonton, you know? Wonton like stack stack <laughs> on to each other. Mm, very good today. I, I cannot eat or <laughs> What thing? <laughs> yeah, I like wonton. Yeah. Oh, wonton is nice. Very good. You are the first person who mentioned about food today. <laughs> Not me and Steph. <laughs> <Bye. Okay. laughs> yeah, I mentioned it, but I cannot eat. Same thing. So what thing? <laughs> what is in your mind? <laughs> See wonton. Cannot eat lah. I will, I will, I don't know how many days I'll be sick after that. Okay, S shape string. So what's up today? Today, today is sleepy weather. Who sleepy says? Weather. Yeah. So cool. Who says? No, it's very hot eh. Yeah, very hot eh. I'm, I'm very cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, control climate. Control climate. I want to show, I want to show something that Yudika uh, give each of us is the Extend Your Enhancements Extendable Guidebook by Elbita Boy. And then in one of the pages, I'm not going to show all, uh, but in one of the pages, she has something called Exotics. So I thought this could be useful for today's tangle. Especially like the, especially like the ending part. You can end in a loop, or you can end with a curl, or you can add a spiral. We can even add a flutter line. So I thought that would be interesting to use. One of those exotics. Hmm. You can actually purchase this little guidebook from Udika if you like. Very, very cute little thing. Handy little thing to keep in your tangling supplies. Hmm. You put fragments inside of the circle. 
Yeah, the thing when I draw the for the T tangle, then I think of uh, the the tangle by itself, the cross knot. Mm-hmm. I put it inside a cross, then with a the hat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's smart. Can we? I first time see one tangle attributed to so many people. Oh, yeah. This is a, a, a group activities. She Actually, she... we I think last time we have four groups, if not wrong. Then we all uh, submit uh, each to the tangle patterns. Mm-hmm. And my group also. But only uh, this tangle is uh, published in that website. Yeah. So I think now I need to go back and dig my, my note sketchbook and find out my my tangle that I deconstruct together with my group member at that time. Then if you so don't... then you shouldn't submit it to Tangle Patterns because they Oh uh, now are... no no longer I, I no longer submit to them. I will just post it in our WordPress, <laughs> our <laughs> <book> post. <laughs> mm, I do it myself. Yeah, <laughs> Thank let you me very much. Right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me finish. Yeah. I was going to say something. So my point is that uh they curate what they want published. Which uh basically we don't usually have uh what I'm trying to say is that you know if let's say you create a tangle and it's unique in the world right or stepped out in a way that is unique and everything um who is to say that whether it should be published or not because it's an existing tangle that you know is a pattern you see as long as it adheres to the logic behind whether it's a pattern or a tangle, I think I think it bears uh it bears a place of honor somewhere in the internet. But my point is that uh tangle patterns is owned and operated by a private entity, by a private person. She shouldn't have um the leeway to decide what sort of tangles are published and what sort are are omitted. Does that make sense? So because all of us are by virtue of our certification, all of us are CZTs. You are not better than anyone or not, not as great as anyone. You get what I'm trying to say. So why does that person then have a right to decide? Um, it's only just that it's her website that she paid for the domain and therefore she has a say. But my point is, it's still a good tangle. I, before, um, before I became a bit more notorious, um, I actually published a lot of uh, tangles and I actually submitted a lot of them to uh, that website. And she rejected me so many times that I actually gave up uh, submitting. And the reasons for rejecting are like, oh, something similar exists or, you know, um, it's not uh, really a tangle pattern and, su- and stuff like that. But then she'll go and... Um, but then there'll be like uh, other people who are accepted and then those will look like other tangles as well. So it's, it's a subjective thing is what I'm trying to say. Someone else's perception is someone else's perception. She has a right uh, to decide what goes onto her website. But my point is that I don't think... Um, after a while, I decided that I will not submit anymore lah, because I don't feel like I should be subjected to uh, someone else's grading, you know? grading system or whatever. So eventually, another website, which is more neutral, came along. And our friends operate their web- website in Germany. It's called MasterQuell. So at MasterQuell, they do things a lot differently. If your step-outs are unique, if your tangle fits the, the HQ definition of being a tangle, they publish it. So my suggestion is to actually um, send it to them instead uh, because their approach is a lot fairer. And I'm not saying that the other person's approach is wrong or anything, but I don't agree that another CZT should be grading another CZT's work. It's very, um, I guess it's... um. Well, I don't, I don't correct other CZTs. <laughs> no, nobody else's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, your, it's your style, right? So the other person shouldn't get to have a say. Mm. 
But yes, we respect it's her website, so she gets to have a say. Like, it's just that I don't believe in supporting something that is only uh, that only supports half the community or the people that she wants to support. Does that make sense? If you want to support, you should be supporting of supportive of all. Lah. You are still better than mine eh? because you got a reply saying so why I don't have any reply. At no, all. I got okay. So I got a reply <laughs> saying why, but then um, so she got so so what happened was I submitted quite a few tangles, and um, I have a. I have a little copyright blurb that I stick to all of my tangles that even I still do that today and it says something like, you know, uh, I've created these step outs. You are feel you know, feel free to create your own step outs, but don't use my assets, lah, basically, because those are copyrighted. So she wrote back because she wanted to use my copyright statement and nothing else. <laughs> I don't think I don't think if she was not gonna use my statement, I would have received a reply. Does that make sense? So I don't want to point fingers because this is like many years ago. Um, I don't think Susan was certified even at this point in time. It's many years ago and I don't want to bring up like past, you know, I mean, people can change. I'm not saying that she can't change or people can't change, but I'm just saying that I don't think it's fair uh, for a CCT to decide on another CCT's work. I mean, I, I mean we deal with CCTAE all the time. We hardly ever tell our instructors what they can and cannot do, right? The only thing is that if it clashes, then we, for the sake of the people attending, we don't have like 10 of the same classes, right? So that's when, that's only when we step in. And we even, even when we do step in, we are very careful that we are, we are making suggestions and not dictating what they should or shouldn't do, you know? Because I think that is very uh, personal. And what right do we have, right? Yeah, what right do we have? If we say that we are empowering uh, CZTs, then we should be empowering of all, not just some. Well, I mean, like you said, it's her, her website, so she get to choose. I don't see what's the big deal about her website. Can we post it on your own blog, your own website? Yeah, Let other people so... find it. Also, I think now the community is very much more diverse diversified, you know. So uh, at that point in time, she was very popular. Her website was very popular because uh, Zentangle was a primarily English-speaking community and the other uh, communities hadn't gotten so large yet. Okay, I think I think we should start on the questions because I don't think we should keep talking about this uh, <laughs> topic or person or website. <laughs> uh okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna QC today's um five questions a little bit because um some of the questions are interrelated. So I'll deal with the ones that are not interrelated and we'll come to the interrelated ones uh towards the end of the program. Okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'll ask the slightly easier one first. Okay? Okay. okay. Okay, what is your favorite artist or music group? Oh, artist like I mean, it can be any, any language. Yeah, any performing artist or or music group. I don't think mm-hmm. we have asked this question before, which is mm, in all our episodes. So this is the fifty third episode, I think. Right, Steph? Yes. Yeah. Favorite artist. I listen mostly to pop song. Yeah, a lot of top top forty. <laughs> yeah, so what's the artist la? I mean your genre, okay, pop, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> you know how when like someone asks you what's your favorite book and then your brain very blank. Wait, let me go to my YouTube history. Um, yeah, okay, I, I think maybe I should answer since I can think of my answer while okay. you look through your YouTube and whatever. Um, okay, I like, I have been listening to K-pop since uh, a very long time ago before it was hip to listen to K-pop or, or J-pop. So I think around the time when I was in secondary school, I started listening to J-pop. And then I got bored of it. And then I started, I think in... Polytechnic 
I and this is this is many years ago. This is like the early two thousands. Uh, K pop wasn't even a known thing at that time. So I used to listen to a lot more K pop than I do now, but I still I still like K pop. Uh, I don't really like to listen to English music though, funny or not. So I find I find that if I have to listen to music, it's either instrumental. Classical, instrumental, or it's K-pop or or, or J-pop, basically. Yeah. So my my genre is that. Uh, my favorite genres are that. But I think I should mention that there was a period in time when I was in secondary school that um my classmates liked this Taiwanese guy called Zhang Zhenyue. Susan, know who he is? Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> He sings very funny songs though, uh, and then and then we I, I recently I thought back about him and then I can't remember what Daniel and I were talking about. So, uh, Daniel didn't remember or he couldn't remember who I was talking about, you know. Uh, so oh I, so why he doesn't have to uh, because I went to school. I mean, it's completely separate from Daniel. <laughs> I only met Daniel like in two thousand three or four. So actually, uh, Zhang Zhenyue, when I went back to YouTube to look at his videos, um, he wrote some pretty funny songs. Actually, I mean, looking at them, they are very funny now, lah. I I don't think I understood um a lot of um what he was singing about at that time when I was in secondary school, but now I do, and it's very funny. So there's one that's called Gan Mei Mei. I think Susan is. Yeah, it's a funny song. Yeah, it's, it's a, a funny, funny song, right? It's funny song. It's like, it's like this guy who went out and then bumped into the girlfriend, but he was holding another girl's hand. So then he's giving all kinds of excuses, like, oh, you know, it's like, um, you know, I wasn't careful and we were drinking and then she held my hand accidentally and then and then uh let's uh for the time being call her call her my god sister, which is Kami Mik, uh and then and then of course. Of course, he make, he makes it worse by telling the girlfriend, the real girlfriend, that well, last time you were also my gummy mate. Oh no! Yeah, yeah asking <laughs> so for whenever trouble. people say, "Hey, do you want to be my gummy mate?" Then be careful. No, <laughs> they got other motive. <laughs> yeah, then uh, of course that's not the the only song. There are a lot of funny ones, lah. Um, yeah, there are quite quite a few funny ones. I can't remember the rest, but there were a few funny ones. Oh oh yes, there's one more one more. Uh, 我要钱. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 我要钱. Okay. So, so the song is very funny. It goes like, 爸爸, 爸爸, 我要钱. <laughs> and then it goes, 妈妈, 妈妈, 我要钱. And then, it's very funny, it's very funny. He gives all kinds of excuses why he wants more money from his parents. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very funny. I should look, I should look up the song and share it, share it with you guys one day. But it's very, very funny. So we were laughing uh, at the music. And uh, of course, um, yeah, la, it's quite, I mean, I don't think he's still singing though. Is he still singing? I don't think he's still singing. I, but I at one know. point, he was very, very, uh, he was doing very well as an artist. Uh, yeah, I don't think he still sings though. But you can still find his music. La. It's just, yeah. Not not very high quality anymore because so much time has passed. Yeah. So. Actually, uh, if you're asking about reason one, I I do not have, but yeah, I try to recall one, like, back when. <laughs> no no. no, no, no I, I, I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, no, not saying that not like not saying <laughs> that not like him. Go he's away. just that uh he he he's not in one of the least. Yeah, because I think I think during our secondary school, uh, we we don't buy CDs because uh, it's expensive. Then what we always listen is only from the radio station. And remember that during the secondary school, if for those uh songs that we like, right, we used to uh write down the lyrics. Then in a in a small booklet, yeah, I think most of my friends is uh, doing that I during our right. secondary time. They also have ah, right. okay. <laughs> so this is not a generation uh, no, but this, uh interest this one, is across time is primary school very very young. Then once hit secondary uh, school, really no one now got internet age. Everyone got their own uh, laptop. 
can go Google. Yeah. Uh, last time it's still all handwritten, so it's oh, no. quite funny. I, I don't know whether it's it still in my house. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, I think the first CD I bought is after, um, after my poly. After I graduated from poly, then I uh, start to work. Then, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, with the old money, then you buy the CD. Then I remember that the first CD I bought, I can't remember is is the Taiwanese uh singer Zhou Huajian, and the other one is the Qi Yu. I think. Yeah, it's a ladies singer. Um, so, uh, uh, this is the the one that I can remember, lah. But I wouldn't recently, say that. I wouldn't hmm. say that Zhang Zhenyue is my favorite still, lah. It's just that recently he brought. I mean, he brought Dan and I a lot of laughter, lah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, with, with some memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how old we are, mm. right? We need to look back and laugh. Uh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Continue, please. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so I didn't I don't really have uh, any like favorite singer like for the, the uh, yeah but I I not going to spend money to buy the CD okay oh, yeah, I'm not fans of any artist uh, I'm not fans of any artist no. so uh, I know that some of my friends are really oh the singer every album that they release they'll just uh, buy it but I'm people, not that people... kind of uh. People still buy CDs nowadays. Uh. I thought, like, usually it's streaming. I mean, this is during my secondary, uh, oh. last time, secondary school time. I saw this time. girl, uh, really. I'm like, wow, so... so <laughs> because she's shit. not in the... Uh. She's not in the... <laughs> the CDs time. Yeah. Don't judge people, lah. Uh. If nice. you want to buy oh, CDs, let them buy, lah. Like, why? Never, never. But I think now, if you want to buy CD, not that easy can, also, uh. right? You still, still can. can. You yeah. still can. You still, still can. can. Yeah, you still can. Mm-hmm. I well, I like I like Blackpink and all the uh, other yeah. K-pop as well, but I I don't think I'll buy their CDs. Also, you know, any money? What? Oh. No lah, I I don't I don't um I mean I like them, but I don't like them that much. Mm. I listen. On then later YouTube. I found that the the CD series that I bought is um it's it's not I think it's not an English song. Um, Putu Mayo. I don't know whether you can still search on um, web. It's just maybe like uh songs from uh, Mexico or some other country, Hawaiian or those kind of um maybe some of the languages I I don't understand. But I like that kind of feel. So I really bought uh I think at least four album wow. from that series. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, that's the time that I found. Uh, later I sh- share with you. It it's sounds uh, like. Let's go. It sounds it's like it's Yeah, I was gonna say it's no. Like, it's like, <laughs> it sounds like a sound like, I, I don't know why they call it, but it's a it's a album series that they they have a lot of uh, mm, different types. Then I really I found. Ba C D I can't help you <laughs> to touch <digest. laughs> <laughs> it. Musically talented. Oh, you the reason why you thought is that is that there's an huh? Indian food called Putu Mayam. Hiyo. The uh, putu see? mayam is kind so of a wrong, white color. Uh. Uh. I'm not wrong. Mm-hmm. I still yeah, try yeah. to be uh. relevant. Or oh, maybe I, pro- I I remember the name wrongly because recently I didn't buy it. Oh, no. But the, the songs can found from YouTube nowadays. Or even a Spotify. A Spotify. Putu mayo. Putu ketchup. Putu mayo. Putu ketchup. So for me... Top 40 charts. Doja Cat. I like Doja Cat. I think she's she's very t- musically talented and she has a lot of stage presence. Billy Eilish. Uh, Blackpink, like Debbie said. Mm, I like... Lizzo. But I think 2N1 was very... Uh, I think I think they broke a lot of ground in 2N1. Then they just repeat some of it for Blackpink. Mm, very good. Yeah. If, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> well, not that it's bad or what. Like, it's just that they are not the first lah, you know. Uh, Go by formula. Mm. Yeah. Even the producer is the same guy, what? Teddy. Yeah. So actually, Teddy, right? Uh, last time he used to be in one time, and then I I like his uh style in one time. I mean, he was at that point. Of course, this is like very very long ago lah, and I don't think one time is someone or, or a group that people know anymore nowadays because they are all retired except Teddy. 
Yeah. Well, Teddy is retired also, like, in a sense. He's, he's only involved in producing. Yeah, that's a good song. A uh, good, good question. Good song. <laughs> What's a good question? The one about music. Uh. No. That's an interesting question. Putu Mayam. Putu Mayo. Putu Mayo. Yeah. Kacang. Someone asked, can, can, I, can <laughs> I break in with a question from audience? Sure. What? Yeah, so... Uh, How old are we? QD, <laughs> Q, no, no. <laughs> Maybe we are telling our age by the answers. Huh? I know, right? So, QD, QD mm. said, Earth, Wind and Fire. Then she said, I'm not sure oh. if we are supposed to engage in your conversation. Then I said, yes, please, please talk That's to us in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even if you're watching this as a recording, we, we, we do keep... Uh, an eye on comment section on YouTube and Instagram. Hi, Hildy. Like yeah, hi. And yeah. then someone I, asked I, the... I oh, saw yeah, you come ahead. in, but I didn't know whether you're still around. So I didn't want to like, <laughs> hi, come Hildy. in and go out. <laughs> and then like nobody Saying hi to nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I saw, I saw her so uh, earlier, but I don't know. Because you know how yeah. you can see people join, but no, you, you can't see, see who is... Uh, you can't see who is still there. Mm. Yeah. Talking to yourself. <laughs> hi, Hildy. Very lonely. Yeah. And then someone else asked the follow up question. He said, okay. "May I ask a question? Which yes, you can. You can ask us. We encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you choose the list of tangles for Inktober?" Oh, okay. Only staff can answer that. Only, Sorry, only only I can answer. Okay. Yes. Uh, so then I shall take a water break. <laughs> <laughs> Drink water. Very thirsty. Yeah. So the way that I choose uh tangles, I have. If I'm not mistaken, five or six officials and tangle ink tangles. So every single list every year has uh, some and tangle ink tangles. I try to pick ones that either are new or that uh, I haven't picked before. And then the rest of the tangles, you actually notice that at the end of every Inktober tangle, uh, at the end of every October basically, I actually put up uh, a question in the Certified Zentangle Teachers Facebook group and also in the 7F5R Challenge group asking people what tangles they would like me to include for next year's list. So every year, I will go back to the previous year's uh, post and then I'll go through that list. That was, that's my first list to go through to see what has been uh, mentioned often. If someone has mentioned one of their own tangles that have been published or if someone has uh, suggested a tangle that I don't know then those are more likely to be included. The criteria is that you must have your pattern, if it's your own pattern, you must have your pattern step out featured uh, on either Instagram or Facebook and you must be public facing. So if you have it in your private group that not everyone can join, not everyone can see, then I cannot use your step outs because obviously then it, it makes it difficult for people to find the tangle step out. Yeah. Uh, and then some people do email me. You must email me early because I prepare the list as early as six months before October. <laughs> because I do have to publish a list on the 1st of September because by then people already start asking about uh, the Inktober Tangles list. So every year on September 1st, I publish it. And then of course, I have to make tiles for each prompt. So I have to prepare it way in advance. Yeah. And then Susan was asking, how do you find so many new tangles? So over the year, I actually have a folder that I would like find tangles that are like, oh, this is new. Someone like published a new tangle that I like. I will save it into a folder for myself. And then I will remember when it comes time to create the list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then when I have that general list, usually I start to uh, look at whether it has enough mix of grid-based tangles and organic tangles. And then once I'm happy with that list, I'll start asking for permission, start going down the list. So if you don't reply, or if you say, no, I don't want to be included, then you'll be taken out of the list. And then I will look at my reserve uh, selection and then substitute that in. Yeah. You didn't ask me for permission, eh? <laughs> yes, I did. We only got the verbal... Yeah, and you asking. Have. No, 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 no email. No, no, no. Hers, hers is like, 
I'm going to use your tangle, okay? That's it. Okay. <laughs> it's not, it's yes. not, it's not in, like... Inform. Uh, it's not Just like inform a, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more like I tell you. Okay? I, I tell volunteer you. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, not, I tell can you. I use you cannot, you I use, cannot uh? choose, uh? You cannot choose. <laughs> you yeah, not? I'm just telling you. I'm being polite, okay? <laughs> yeah, that, let me... Yeah, she's like... Well, uh, I did I did allow you guys. I said I want to feature at least one tangle from you guys. You can choose which mm. tangle you want. Right? I didn't get to choose. Yes, you, you did. I, I didn't choose Braven Sword. You chose it. Yeah, I chose Braven Sword. Braven Sword, okay. Your yeah, so, one. so okay. My, point, my point is that you choose really, <laughs> but, then you ask, then you... But know. Susan, Susan So you, you are not Susan... asking for permission. You are telling people, I'm going to take, ah. Uh. I take, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I take, ah. Uh. Because we're friends, ma. Right. So, so, she so does, yeah. you know, the, so, the whole time uh, in the studio, right? She sees something, I take, ah. Uh. I take, ah. Uh. Mm. Thank you, Susan. I take, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same. I think same, same. <sighs> same, same. But okay. Susan's tangle was not my first choice. I had chosen a different one of her tangles, and then she said, "Can mm-hmm. I use this other tangle?" Then I said, "Sure." Oh. Which you choose, ah? Uh? You still remember? I can't remember like the first. I I deleted all the previous drafts. Yeah, better to delete lah. Like, not be wrong. Better confuse you... yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, confuse yourself. Yeah, but I remember that it was not. My first choice, my first choice or something. Else. Then she hadn't published a post, blog post for that tangle, so she had to do homework. Mm. Oh, can I that one? Uh? I thought the criteria must be published. Because we, we are just even, ma, so you get. Oh, more. so Susan uh, got special treatment. Yes. Thank oh. you very much. I had to wait for her. <laughs> Chase her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, you remember <laughs> to do this? Uh? She, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to publish next week. Okay, very good. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, thank you for the, the question. And if you would like your tangle to be featured, especially if it's lesser known. Like, one of the tangles that was that has been very popular this year is uh, Sumu. Sumu? Yeah. By whom? Uh? Let me see whom it is by. And a lot of people have, have said, uh, Sumu by Lin Chu. I don't know if you remember. It's 30, 30 over <laughs> tangles and people. I don't know. I don't know Lin Xiu personally, so I'm sorry if, you know, why, why you don't know me? <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people like her tango, so it's, it's not very well known, and a lot of people have said that it's like your new favorite tango, so if you have a tango that you would like me to feature next year, please message me. I'd love to see your tango for consideration. Yeah, so that be back to you. What's question number two? Okay, I think the next unrelated question, because I mentioned that we have a few related questions. Mm. Um, actually, the, there are four related questions. So the next one is actually, what do you live for? Like yourself, you know? Um, what, what drives you? What do you live for? It's related to the next few questions, but uh, this one is slightly lighter la, because you, know, you can answer based on your own. Beautiful. Yeah, what what do you live for? Do you live for drawing every day, going for a walk every day? Do you live for do you live to eat? I don't know. Um Yeah, so there are a lot of things that people fill their time with. What is uh you know for you la, that you live for? Debbie, what do you live for? Hmm. I think it's okay to take some time to think about it because I think everybody has a very different answer. I think for me, I kind of live for being myself. I I don't know whether I regret or not being uh, so much myself, but I can see why I have made a life like that and I can see why... Uh, I can see the journey now clearer than last time. So uh, my childhood was not an easy one. Growing up was difficult. Um, I don't have a lot of things that people have. Um, But over the years, I've come to terms with why I'm different. So I live for being myself. And I think this is hard for a lot of people to accept. Uh, sometimes it's hard for Stephanie to accept as well because I do things very differently to most people. Um, 
I think for me, I kind of live for making my life count to myself and not to other people. So in a way, in a way, other people's opinion uh, has a limited effect on me, depending who they are. So yeah, I guess I live for myself. I think I think for me to say that is a mark of how much I've grown as well. Because I used to live for my parents, I used to live for my family, I used to live for people. And then gradually I realized that, you know, if you don't live for yourself uh, and you're constantly trying to please other people, then the last one to be happy is you all the time. So sometime in my 30s, I had a very big change in mindset. And I started, you know, deciding that I'm going to put myself first. Not not to say that I don't put other people first or don't care for other people or that I'm selfish. The more like, you know, uh, I care about them. But in order to care about them, I have to care about myself first. Yeah. And um, sometimes I have to tell myself to say no to certain things, certain people, uh, when they start to get damaging so I never used to have that kind of defense mechanism uh, because I thought I wasn't worth it. Does that make sense? I thought that, you know, I had to agree to things that people were doing or saying in order to be loved. So gradually as I gained uh, more self-compassion and more self-acceptance, uh, then I started living for myself. Does that make sense? Of course, I mean, there are other people in my life that I care about, right? But mm. uh, essentially, you can't, you can't negate yourself. Yeah. You can't pour from an empty cup. Hmm. Can I copy your answer? <laughs> Just joking. <sighs> Just joking. Susan, oh, okay, where are you? I, I, I looked up for a while, then after I got no hands on the table. I thought it disappeared. No okay. hands. Yang go next. Why you you say that you want to steal and then you... You first? Yeah, I'm just joking. Uh, what? I I first... No, so I volunteer. She arrow you, me. right? Yeah, yeah. I arrow her. I you go first, Asa? Mm, mm. I leave for... I think Charlotte is a big factor in my life now. Yeah. I would hope so. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> you I know that. Charlotte, I would hope Charlotte so. is Charlotte is um my daughter for, for anyone who's new and tuning in. Yeah, so you think you think so, you hope so. Someone asked in a question in a question in, in chat, a quick one. I'm gonna answer. Uh, will there be a replay of this? Yes, you'll get a replay of it on our Instagram channel at Seven Forest Five Rivers and on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash seven five studio. Mon français est pas bien. Je parlais un petit peu. Est-ce que French aussi? Je parlais français comme un vache espagnol. I speak French like a Spanish cow. So, yes, there will be a replay. Oui, oui there will be a replay. Yeah. Um, from... Coming from someone who's, who had struggled with depression, um, it's an interesting question as well because for the longest of time, I had no will to leave. <laughs> uh, I speak candidly about about my my uh, mental health, but it is a serious topic. Yeah, but right now, for the first time in a very very long time, there is things to look forward to for my future. I think more so. I live to see how this whole adventure will turn out. Like, if you think about life as an adventure, right? I want to see how it plays out. I want to see what kind of people I meet, what kind of projects I do. Um, I had this theory when I was, like, in my lowest low with depression where I thought about um, a suicide. I thought to myself, if this is the lowest point in my life, then by that logic there will be a highest point uh, I should so I, I should warn you Steph I should warn you that there yeah. are more questions coming along so you yeah. are answering some of the I will <laughs> still let you answer the next yeah, yeah so, I'll just repeat myself 
Yeah, <laughs> so it's gonna be a very long session if you're gonna, <laughs> gonna say it. Okay. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but I need to tell you that the next few questions will be okay. related. You know, I will. I will stop here then. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want you to run out of steam like before. This is like please, please, know, please, please, yeah. please see above. <laughs> So no, I cannot. Few no, cannot. But yeah, Charlotte, short answer is Charlotte and yeah. seeing how this plays out. Yeah. Seeing where life takes place. Not even us, uh, okay, la. then we. Susan, you are part of the whole out. story, right? Yo. Then you even worse, you. I leave for myself. <laughs> Throw away everyone. <laughs> Cannot do that, la, right? That's not what we mean. <sighs> Susan, how about you? Then faster, can I combine the answer? Faster say us. <laughs> Live for my family and also for myself. <laughs> very good conclusion. Mm, very good. <laughs> because, uh, because um, if uh, about the family, right? Um, I'll think that if there's no families or friends around, then if alone, then quite lonely and quite upset sometimes. So if you have a friends or family members that you. I think that you live for them, or they are your like the the pillar or the support people behind you. Then you feel that uh you become very brave. Yeah, not only just family but friends. Just like <laughs> Debbie said, why didn't mention us? <laughs> so friends also can. Oh, uh, right. Then yeah, don't <laughs> then the the second one uh live for myself is that I find that um. Maybe last time when I was very young, I didn't think about this one. But when I'm getting older, I thought that every day is like a learning day for for me. So even something bad that happened, but it still uh, it's like a lesson from God. It's a like homework from God. Then I need to uh, try to solve the maybe solve the question or to resolve the problems or handle it. Yeah. Maybe sometimes I cannot handle it well, but I try my best. Then uh, I think that what God gave, gave to me is something that I have the ability to, to solve it. Not in 100%, not in 100 marks, but at least I can go through with it. Yeah. So a learning is something that I found that is very important in my life. For I also look forward to learn something. Uh, in oh, now or future. Mm, yeah. Live long, long, learn long, long. <laughs> long, long. <laughs> okay, so, so before, before you all elaborate and then overshoot yourselves, right? Maybe oh, I overshoot. should ask the next question. Yeah, because it seems like, um, mm. it seems like you both have a lot to say about this, which is a good thing. So before we lose the momentum, I'm going to bring up the next question, which is, how do you know that your life is getting better? Oh. You feel happy? Yeah, for me it's very simple. At least I don't have depression. It's not depressed. Yeah, but, have but feeling not depressed is not depressed. Lah. But how do you know that your life is getting better? That's how you know. Right? You're getting better with handling you, your life. Health. No, no, see, your life can be very good. Your life can be very good, but you can still be depressed. Fair enough. Right, so you can't say that. Uh, I mean, it's not automatic that you know you are not depressed, therefore your life is better, or vice versa, right? My 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 depression was situational based, though. So I think when I got out of the that horrible situation, then that's when it got better. So that's how I knew. Mm, yes and no, because depression, although is, uh, part of your experience, and that's that's your response to an experience. But depression can stay with you even though you're outside of the situation. Mm. Yeah, so it goes, I mean, it's not automatic like you get out of the situation means you get out of the depression. Some, the some depression, depression can follow like you. That, yes. Some depression. Yeah, la, but I'm saying, I'm saying it for people who are listening oh. in. Yes. I'm, not, I'm not trying to correct okay. your, your whatever uh, you are saying, but I'm trying to explain that not everybody has that. And that's okay. You know, because there are many types. Mm. Yeah. So, how do you know that life is getting better? You, you were about like to answer Susan that. Said. That's why I had to step in. Susan, like what Susan said, feel happier. Feel more content, I think. Is. I feel more at peace with 
myself in my life. I think that's how I mean. Susan, what about you? I think there's a... I have two answers. First one is that uh, every wow, day when you time, wake up... Two answers, very good. Yeah, very good. Mm-hmm. Uh. So can I skip one? No, no, no. Me, can I can I can I Okay. So first answer is that when you wake up, uh, you feel that it is hopeful for the day. It's not very down mm-hmm. or like, uh, why is it another day? So very uh, restless or whatever. We kind of uh, very tiring. Kind of. If you can wake up in the morning, then you feel that, wow. Oh, very happy, or very uh, looking forward some, for something. Then I think there's a mark that for you to know that you you cope the the life better and better every day. Then the second answer is that when you facing a uh, similar challenges, or maybe uh, again there's a uh, some people that talk in front of you is very uh, nasty or how, what kind of things. Then you find that the way you react to it is different than last time. Maybe you are more a calmer. Or maybe you just ignore whoever is this, like very you thought that they are they just talking nonsense. Then you just ignore it, but without affecting your emotions. Then I think that you found that you are getting better and better to cope with uh this kind of emotion or maybe some yeah. uh, challenges. Yeah, like. Coping mechanism is to ignore the person. Eh? No. no, no, no. That's an example. <laughs> which means, okay, for example, if I uh, face a, a, a problem, then the way that I handle it, the way I solve it is more wiser than last time. Yeah. Maybe last time I like so, an ostrich. Oh, oh. I just go away. Then uh, just ignore it. But now I have the, the courage to, to face it and to use a way that I thought that it is, uh, it would be a good way to handle it. Yeah. So the 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 problem solving skills yeah is improved they will know you are getting better mm. Mm. wiser and better I mean sometimes mm. avoiding a person is also coping you know yeah I was going to say oh, yeah yeah because, you know, because yeah, because, to yeah it's true <laughs> because you know that yeah. what kind of people you just just ignore some kind of people you just so don't need to with, care about yeah but what is life experience those but what yeah, life experience those, what happens if those people are your your family members. I think is it there is no one answer for all questions, so it depends on yeah, so, <laughs> depends so, on situation. So in some of my cases, right? So some of my cases is the um, where I mean, some of the things that I've gone through, some of the people that are uh, have hurt me and have gave me the trauma and stuff, right? Uh, some of them are actually my family members. Then how? I think I don't think I'm the only one. You know, I'm sure other people also have this problem. I think you you, you it, get me. Yeah, I think yeah. in Chinese culture we say like, oh, because it's the zero, and then you must, you and you must forgive, or you must pretend Oops. that you're okay. But I don't agree with that belief. I believe that even if it's family, even if it's blood relative, if they really don't want to change, their attitude is gonna be the same the whole time. Then it is still okay to cut them out. But you can't. I agree with that because yeah, different situations. Okay. Okay. Who's going to speak? Ah, sorry. <laughs> Susan? Ah. Yeah, because uh, uh, just like what I say, that there's no really one solution for all oh. kind of things. Like mm. Our families uh, come with, we have different families members. And even in same family, the person might treat A in this way, treat B mm. as the other way. So mm. there's no, no uh, so called a formula to, to, to what to do on this kind of things so only uh, you yourself who mm. are in that situation you can decide what you want to do what is best for you and different people have different thresholds also right like maybe mm. if yeah. the same person treat Susan and me the same way maybe I can't take it but maybe Susan is like okay mm. I can understand this person so I will I will be okay yeah but you, you see uh, your mental health is not understanding someone else's nonsense you see Right. Yeah, so it's threshold like, it's what can you what kind of bullshit can you pull out with? No, but but <laughs> even if you can pull out with it, doesn't mean you have to pull out with it. Yeah, so there comes full circle back to the just because their family doesn't have to, have to take any of their nonsense. Huh? If you feel yeah, but my point is what happens if the person is trapped, you see. Mm. I guess it only works if you can remove yourself, you know? Mm, correct. 
I think yeah, but if you can't things. if you can't remove yourself, right, then a lot of it is I mean, you know, sometimes we say that I just just ignore a person, right? And then you mm. you, you resolve part of it. Correct, but contact. what if the person cannot be, you know, you can't ignore that person? Then you you move, make steps towards being able to move away from that person? Yeah, but yeah, that that's still the same thing, Steph. <laughs> My point is that why you can't you know? Yeah, so I, I guess you have to, I mean, we we face it in a way where, you know, the person can be removed or, you know, you can move away, you know? But what mm-hmm. if there's someone who can't, right? Yeah, so we, I think it's something that, like like you guys say, la, it's a very subjective thing, you know? But when we are talking about this in public, we just have to be a bit more mindful because there are people who can't, remove themselves and there are people who can't remove other people you know stuff like that mm. yeah but it's true uh, we don't have all the answers uh, but we just we're have also, to be mindful we're also not trained psychotherapists please, <laughs> please okay don't. come back come come back to this uh. mm. how do you know that your life is getting better we answer again so, that no, because, so because right yeah I know I have an answer that's why I'm bringing it back so my po- uh, yeah you're too uh. <laughs> You are to, uh, bring it back, bring it back. Bring it yeah, back. so I, I have an answer, which is why I have to repeat the question for those who just joined us. Um, you know you know your life is getting better when you have a lot to look forward to. You know, mm. you have people people who care about you to look forward uh, to spending time with. And you look forward to things that are uplifting. Uh, and you know your life is getting better when you have... Uh, people that believe in the same thing as you do. So mm-hmm. I think for me, um, this also um, brings uh, me back to the journey that I took as a CCT. So before um, CCT AE and all the other things that we used to do were, was created, I used to feel like um, being a CCT versus being a, just a part of the art community or the Tango community, right? I felt like... Um, I felt like there was a bit of a disconnect because people who weren't CZTs were more friendly than people who were CZTs at that point in time. Maybe early, like, 2015 sort of thing, you know? So for me, right, I think that my journey as a CZT has also enriched me um, and brought me to a community that um, has, uh, well... It didn't exist, this community before, but it's brought me to a community that now is very thriving, very vibrant, and the community really cares about each other. And um, I would say that it's a very, very big difference. I'm not sure whether Susan will know what I mean, but I think Steph will know what I mean. Mm. Uh, in the in the culture, there was the community, I mean, the, the Zentangle community at that point in time, uh, and the CCT community at that point in time. So, of course, there are overlaps because the Zentangle and the CCD community overlaps. But I guess um, at that point in time, it was a lot more hostile, you know? Like, uh, maybe the maybe because... Small. Yeah, I know, right? I, I'm not sure why it was very, very hostile at that, that point in time. But, um, so, gradually, I feel that my confidence has grown as well. And I begin to look forward to more and more uh, projects within the community, more and more collaborations. Um, when we say this, we don't mean that, oh, you know, it's like, oh, we we own the whole thing and we don't. Uh. I mean, we, what I'm saying is that, you know, ever since things uh, got going for CCT, we feel like, you know, there's a lot more to just being a CCT than before, uh, especially for us because we came in much earlier. Um and this the current um community is so uplifting that is very very different from the community we used to know uh back then and I think that's one of the reasons why I think it's getting better for me la, because I can see that some of what we do for the community is actually bearing fruit so I think also when you are um doing your own calculations or your own uh, mental like uh, stock taking of your life it's important to also celebrate the small victories so why I say this uh, why I'm saying all of these actually is because 
um, you guys can look at CCT and Ian and my and, and, and look at it and like, wow, it's so big now, you know, and stuff like that. Wow, you know, it's like it's worldwide. But I remember a CCT that was like 10, 10 people strong or, you know, and very minute. And, and never, I mean, I would have never imagined that we would grow so big. Um, I'm not saying that it's my pet project and that's why I'm proud of it. But I'm saying it's kind of like the community is driving it to be bigger. Does that make sense? And so that is what um, I am proud of, that the community is behind it. Not so much of what I've done over the years, but more like... Um, oh, and this is not an advertisement because we have already closed registrations like long ago. It's advertisement uh, for next year. <laughs> not Join exactly our new chapter. <laughs> well, maybe there's no next year even. I don't know. Yeah, talk. Yeah. That's true, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. Maybe, yeah. So, well... My my point is that um, finding a community, not necessarily arts community or whatever, but finding a community also helps you find more uh, Purpose. reason and more meaning, you know, and to see that life is getting better. So all your milestones, no matter how big or small, should be celebrated. So for many years, uh, CCT was small and our studio was very tiny. Uh, our student is growing. So we celebrate every milestone um, just for the kick of it and also to remind ourselves that, you know, it's not... I mean, you don't build like a dynasty one day, you know, right? Uh, not not to say we're building a dynasty, but yeah. you don't... Gonna yeah, you don't Overtake get, the world soon. <laughs> you don't get that far in one day, you see. So it's like many one days added together. And many instructors, many, many people involved, uh, many participants involved. So, and that, that is why I think life is getting better for us. Lah, because it's growing. What we do is prospering. Yeah. Okay. So, are we done with this mm. question? Uh, anyone mm. in the audience want to chime in before we continue? Because I think we have a couple of CZTs as well who are in the audience. No, I've got people asking questions. Like? What? Uh, do you have favourite tangles? Oh, do, do we have favourite tangles? Okay, Steph? Mm. Huh, me? Uh, I think we answered this like twice in different episodes. It's okay, answer. Yeah, yeah. Always change. Every episode is different. Uh, I know what Susan's answer is. Can you not answer for other people? Answer for yourself. Uh, I, forgot already, I forgot already. Eh. I know what your favourite tango is. Huh, you forgot your, your current, favourite tango? Your current favourite tango Keep changing. is Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, today I forgot to draw. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no, I, I forgot to draw in this town, but this morning I still draw the white. <laughs> okay. I, I Later will, I show you. <laughs> I will answer my question. Ah. I like this tango. It's a tango called Nemil, I think called Nemiel. Nemiel. Yeah. I like this tango. It's featured here. Yeah. Baby, what about you? Favorite tango? Sorry, I was taking a water break. Oh. Um yeah. This is this reminds me of how, you know, previous uh episodes where we were both at the studio and then I'll be like drinking water and then Steph will call on me on purpose. Very good. Yeah, well, I I recently like uh so I think the past episode when we were asked I said something like uh vertigo I think yeah what is was it I am gonna show you the alumni friendship reef that we did recently and it's not complete because I've had one heck of a week just 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 three days actually not even the full week <laughs> so I still haven't finished. And uh, I actually drew wrongly. Can you see my symphony? It's like very strange. It's a strange funny. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a strange funny. Uh, I, I kind of like Gohita uh, recently. Gohita. And then recently, I also like uh, Tick Tick. Tick Tick by Tomomi and Onamoto. Yeah, so did I write anything on the back? No, I didn't. Let me see what other tiles I have here. Well, I have a lot of yerba here. Um, 
Oxydot is nice. Oxydot is nice. We did this last week, right? Did we? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Was it the week before? Yeah, it's a week fun tangle. Yeah, it's a fun tangle. Well, it's still here with me. <laughs> what did we do last week? Eh? <laughs> Nobody can remember. <laughs> Uh, any, any, anyhow. Oh, yeah, any. Yeah, yeah, any. Yeah. So, favorite tangles. Uh, our favorite tangles keep changing. So, it's okay to keep asking. So, so both of you answered already, right? So, can we go on to the last two questions? Can. Yeah. Okay, so these two questions are very much related, okay? So, maybe I should ask them both at the same time. But you can answer one by one, lah. Okay, so mm. say something to a friend who has depression or a loved one who has depression. And what if this is your last chance to win someone over from depression? What will you do? So it's kind of interrelated. And I think we should take it as one big question. I think, I think you will probably need some time to think about it now. I think the reason why we talk about all of these things is because um, depression is a very real and very overlooked issue in Asian society. I'm not sure how it's like in other countries, but in Asia, um, it's like nobody wants to talk about it, you know, sometimes. And uh, I've, been, I've been in groups where the person is clearly needing uh, like support and not finding it. And because of that, I almost am always the one trying to reach out to the person who is needing the support. But it's not easy because when you are the only one trying to support the person, right, uh, you get drained very fast. So sometimes I feel that conversations like this uh, are very important. And that's one reason why we try to incorporate uh, a mental health sort of uh, vibe in our live shows. Not that any of us are professionals. Uh, yeah. I will say though, and I've said this to my mom before, that it is not your job to ensure that someone does not analyze themselves. You should not feel their responsibility. And also, if it comes to a point where, like Debbie said, like it's not an easy thing to support someone who has uh, depression. If it comes to a point where you feel like you cannot continue to support the person, you shouldn't feel obligated to do so at the expense of your own mental health. What if you are the only person that the person has? Have you thought about that? It, it still stands. This is coming from someone who has had depression, who did go through a suicide. So you're saying that I never had depression? No, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just saying... Yeah, so it should why not are you come. Yeah, it should not come at the expense because you should always prioritize your own mental health first. You cannot Yeah, but my point come. my point is not that you are not prioritizing your mental health, but my point is what do you say to a friend who has, or a loved one who has depression? And what if this is your last chance? to win that person over from depression and what will you do? I'm not saying not to prioritize yourself. I'm saying in a situation like that, what will you think of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying as an added point, it should not be your responsibility because the people who had loved ones who had depression and decided to take that route, they might feel their responsibility, you know? You are not, you are not feel... here to dictate what people feel or not, you see. I mean, if they mm -hmm. feel responsible, then that's to do with them. It's not to do with you. Right? Yeah, but I'm saying it more in a, in a reassuring way, you know? Not in a you can't feel your feelings kind of way. Yeah. Susan, do you want to chime in? What will you say? Um, I think uh, for people who under depression, one of the things that they are very quite, uh, they find it difficult to come up from that 
uh, situations. For example, maybe in, during some some things that that happen in their life or whatever, they 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 try to just stay continue staying in that situation without uh breaking through because they they are not able to do that. So is I uh, advise that to reach out to other people to go out from their home to maybe talk to people or talk to therapists or talk to their friends because if you if someone who have depression and say that, okay i don't want to go out i just stay at home leave me alone then it is quite dangerous because uh, what chinese we say the zuan niu jiao jian they cannot break, break through or they cannot come out from that from that situation then it's it's very um, very bad so if they are able to like maybe come out and reach out to to other people's to tell them or maybe to to learn new things by my by uh attending some talks then maybe they will might change their their thoughts a little bit then yeah that's what i thought lah. because i'm not i'm not very sure what is the best way for them but what i think that is that it will be good that they go and see other people instead of just stay at home leaving them alone so if you had yeah. a loved one, Susan, who was very depressed and, you know, you mm. talk to the person and that person responds to you, what would you say to that person? You know, like as a friend, you know, like... Come, come um, we go makan. Maybe, 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 <laughs> this go makan. Is, maybe this is your sibling or your your loved one, you know, or your niece mm. or your nephew that grows up and then, you know... You know, you know, children sometimes go through depression anyway, right? And it's not to say that the parents don't care or whatever, although in some cases the parents really don't care. But I'm saying that if what if this is someone in your life that you know, what will you say to that person? I I I agree with you that the person should get out more and stuff. But what, what um, specifically what on your I mean on your gut lah, on your gut, what will you do? You know, not not to say that the person doesn't need therapy or anything. But what could you do and what would you do? Bring that person out, like Steph say, go and makan or maybe just walk around. Then maybe when you go to do some activities, uh, that person might talk much about himself or herself because sometimes they don't want to really talk about themselves too mm, much. Mm, they will mm. find that even I talk to you, you don't understand me. You can't mm. help me. You are not a ter- therapist. Even you are a therapist. Therapist not not hundred percent can can help me. Yeah. So, uh, so it, instead of like uh telling them or advise them what to do, just bring them out maybe for a uh, relax or makan sessions or maybe just walk around. Then slowly they might express themselves. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that by expressing themselves to another person, it helps to release some of the the stress level inside them. That's what I believe. Uh. Yeah. Mm. If they, they just stay at home Then talk nothing about their feelings Then the things will become like It will just keep it inside their heart Then it become more and more And very heavy I think I think also it's the head voice That they have in their heads You know So You know uh, A lot of depressed people right? Why they are depressed Is because the same uh, Negative thoughts are playing over and over mm. Yeah, it's it's not so much that uh, bad things keep happening sometimes. Although there there are people who bad things well one after another keep coming and happening, and I've been in that situation where bad things keep on happening. Uh, very often in my life, I've been in that situation. But my point is that you know what you tell yourself matters. So if I tell myself constantly that you know I I'm I'm just lousy and I'm not doing things the way I should be doing, or it's my head voice that's wrong. So I think what Susan is saying, uh, go out and meet more people, is um, it's partly uh, helpful to meet other people, but you can meet everybody you want, but if your head voice is wrong, um, then you will always be thinking negative stuff, and then sooner or later you'll be believing the negative stuff uh, about yourself. So in a way, I agree that the person has to get out more, has to see more people, but of course, not see more damaging people, lah. I hope. Yeah. So have to be aware of yeah. what kind of uh, activities or people you you see or 
the the seminar or the talks that you attend because <laughs> you must choose what whichever is uh benefits for you instead of damaging you more. I think also, right, um, you shouldn't assume that because you yourself have gone through depression, maybe, that your friend is also going through the same thing. You get what I mean? Not? So a lot of us, mm. right, when we... when Oh, we lost her? Yeah, we did. She's gone. Well, should I pick up from there? Yeah. Answer. Mm. Mm. Come back. For me, I would say, I think what you say is true. You should ha- have the person, invite the person to go out more. Because I think the opposite of depression is not happiness. The opposite of depression is doing. You do things, mm. then mm. it will... It might like it might bring more purpose into your life, and then in the act of uh, of uh, doing more things, then you can get out of your inner kind of uh, world that you've created for yourself. You know. Hi, Debbie. Sorry, I don't know how I got kicked out. <laughs> I thought it's like your phone overheat or something. No, no, no. I I don't know what happened. Yeah. So I I think I was saying something like you know. You, you, when you are talking to the person, although you have been through depression, right? And the person is also going through depression, right? Our tendency is to assume that we know and understand. But that's, that's how we show empathy, yes? But also, there's a part of uh, it that everyone's depression is not the same. Mm. Yeah. But I was saying, uh, I would also bring the person out because the opposite of depression is doing and then hopefully that gets them out of that that um negative thought cycle like that we said. And then also I will say mm, I've come to realize that like that we said that like everyone's depression is different. So what you say to one person that works might not work for another person. I remember telling uh one person like, Oh what about your 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 loved ones, you know, your mom, for example, I know that she like she loved her mom a lot. And then she was saying, Why do I have to leave for other people? I find that very selfish. So that that was an interesting perspective. I did not think to to uh, see see it from that perspective, right? But that's also a valid point that she has, you know, why should you leave for other people? So yeah, I think a lot of things a lot of it is just Sitting and listening to that person. Oh. No, but you also need to explain that you care about the person. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But so, do you remember when you were struggling? I always told you that you were loved. Mm-hmm. But depression is insidious in the sense where no matter how many times you are told that your depression would find a way. No, but you see, if it. you see what I'm trying to say is that. If you don't love a person, you're not going to stand there and fight together with that person. The fact that the person next to you is still holding on to you and standing there fighting with you means the person loves you. So there are people who don't have that even. Right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, and therefore, to know that a person is caring about you and loving you could make it different for that person Hmm. because it affects the how the person sees uh the value um of being alive you see Like, if I am alive, but I think nobody loves me, right? Then most likely, I'll, I'll be very annoyed with myself. Lah. I'll be like, why why don't you know I deserve love or stuff like that? So, there's a part of that as well that you need to reassure the person. So, what I would do in a situation where a friend or a loved one has depression is to bring back the person to, you know, why he or she matters to us or to me or to the community or to the family, you know? 
So that's one way uh, I would do it. Besides taking the person out. Lah. So, um, and I have practiced this with Steph in the past as well. I brought Steph to eat a lot. And Steph does eat a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, I guess knowing that a person really cares about you and is willing to fight next to you, um, gradually, that person will be um, mindful of the fact that you are really trying your best to help, you see. You know, and gradually, when things start to get better, then it helps to kick in for that person whether or not, you know, there's something to live for. It's not instantaneous, like, I guess. Of course, of course, you know, um, a person can choose to remain depressed. And I've seen, I think, I think I shared with Steph before, like, uh, some of my friends, uh, not for lack of trying, but there have been cases where some of my friends, they cling on to their depression. Um, I think that there are many reasons why people do this, because, you know, it makes them feel safe. Lah. They are so used to thinking in a certain way uh, that they sort of want to get better but then when the moment people come along and help them and they start to doubt themselves or they doubt the person you know so it kind of undermines the healing process and then it confuses them and then they prefer their familiarity la, of um, being alone or being like depressed so I think I think people have a choice hmm? I think sometimes brain chemistry so if you're really struggling you might want to look into getting medication that might help um, right, from what I understand some people explain it as sometimes the hole is so deep that you need to be given a torchlight in order to find the exit so it, it could be just for that time period you just need to be on medication for a little bit and then you can get your life in order in order to feel uh, more equipped in moving forward to a brighter path. So yeah. Speak to a professional. Yeah, but see, Steph, I'm talking about what we can do as friends to support the person, not just uh, seeing a professional, although that's 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 a good direction, a good step. Hmm. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people... Um, from time to time, they are depressed, you know? It's not a chronic depression. It's, it's just that in that moment, they need support. Uh. Depression is described as uh, six months or longer, if I remember correctly. Like there's a yeah, clinical... but six months is a very short time, you know? Compared to, like, lifelong... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I guess what the question is about also is like, it just helps us be mindful of, you know, life is going well for us, right? But if, if this were to happen to someone that's, you know, immediately in our day-to-day, -day, what will our response be? Lah, you know, like, of course, yeah, I, I, I agree also that, you know, you should, if you can, go and see a professional and stuff like that. But what if it's not a severe case? What if it's just, you know, something that you can do? within uh, your friendship. Although, I'm not saying that anyone is obliged to do anything. I'm just saying that if you were in your power, what would you be doing? Yeah. What if the person cannot afford therapy? Then what's your alternative? Uh, I can't speak for other countries, but there are organizations that have tiered pricing tied to your income. So that, that can be an alternative. And Singapore also has the Samaritans of Singapore hotline, if I'm not, not mistaken. Yeah. 
caught in. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah, the nature of depression, right, will mean that the person will not be, uh, probably, la, yeah. if the person is depressed, yeah, they probably may not be looking up, like, the where to go mm. and what to do, you know, because the very act of that is uh, torture to them already, like, huh, I must go and find out, you know, the, the kind of, like, the, there are barriers, la, you know, that a person who is depressed uh, cannot cope with. Does that make sense? I mean, I mean, a perfectly functional person will be able to find resources on the internet, will be able to seek help, you see, but that's a functional person. So, I, I mean, there are people who are, I've seen and, and also my, one of my past experiences myself is that I don't think I want to reach out to anyone. And that is also a response of depression, you know. Because, well, for some people, it's lack of trust, I guess. Some people, it's lack of finances. Some people, it's lack of resources, you know. And some people, it's like, they know that the moment that they go into therapy, right, uh, they might lose their family members. There are many reasons why people avoid therapy, you know. Mm. Yeah, so, so it's not, I mean, I'm not saying that therapy is bad. I'm just saying that the circumstances for the person might be such uh, that they may not see that therapy is the best option uh, or the best like avenue for them at that time. You know? mm. Yeah. Like Susan said, uh, no one size fit all. Yeah. Different people got different needs. So all, all y'all will do is buy food, is it? Buy food mm. when the person out. <laughs> Not just food la, just a company that person. Yeah, oh, big there's, there's kind, there's yeah. kind, there's another kind of like mm. just try to, uh, change her attention from something that she's stuck in. But that's the uh, that's distraction, eh? That's not. No, no, because distract. <laughs> yes, first distract, just like kids. <laughs> When they Ayyoh. are like, crying, right? Ayyoh. When they are crying for something, right, you need right. to first Do to distract see? them. Do you see? Yeah, no, right. not give three, but distract them by, oh, look in there, there's an excavator or whatever. Ayyoh. Then after they uh, become oh calmer, when they become calmer, then you can talk to them to explain to them that what should do and what should not do. Just like if people who are, if like people holding the knife or whatever want to do something, well, Are you going to to tell them to not you, put out the things, however? Like no, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have to distract first. That's the 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 fastest way to to it, during the emergency. What I think So, I so think, distract think, them from bring out from makan. Mm, then slowly talk to them in another way. Susan, uh, I mm. think uh, we are gonna be booted off. <laughs> I think Instagram might boot us off eventually. Susan. What kind of advice are y'all giving people? Look, it is Kavita. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. It's an example. Oh. <laughs> ah, so cute. Ah. I think a lot of parents do that, right? During <laughs> on the, the kids. But this Look, is also, also I think... Depression. Look, it yes, is Kavita. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. My my main point is that you need to to uh try to change the focus from that person mm. instead of looking at the depression, trying to 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 bring in another thing, then to slowly come back to the topic. <laughs> or maybe also it's a way to gain trust as well. Like you talk about other things because talking about like a big problem like depression can be very confronting. And not everyone mm. is ready for that kind of conversation. So if you, like Susan said, if you talk about the excavator, maybe then they talk about their feelings, right? Now, when they feel comfortable or trust mm-hmm. you, yeah, then but... slowly they will review with you. Not necessarily, la, but you can try, I guess. So, uh, Susan's answer is to talk about excavators. No, and la. Then that's good. And then you. Stephanie's <laughs> answer is to bring them out for, for a meal or yes. do something. Yes. Right, and then my answer is to tell them how loved they are. Very good. Yeah. So so, well, I guess if you are depressed and you reach out to us, you get three very nonsensical answers. But do reach out to us anyway if you are depressed. At least we can talk to you. Nonsensical or not? At least I'm on brand. Well, yes. I think that it's important to laugh. Mm. Because once you can laugh about it and joke about it with someone that you trust, it's not that bad, you know? 
So last time I remember, I mean, well, I'm going to talk about Steph uh, because Steph is here and Steph will not uh, be offended, I think. Well, even if she's no. offended later, she can still yell at me, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so mm. even if she's offended, she will still yell at me later, so it's okay. But I'm going to talk about Steph because I, I remember Steph going through a very difficult time. Uh, and um, at that point when she met us, she was a very sensitive... Mm individual and very it's easily it's upset it's... very easily upset by certain things that we said you know and then and then i realized that the key to get rid of that sensitivity is actually through laughing for her so she laughs at us we also laugh at her it's fair la. basically we, we we are quite fair about that we allow her to laugh at us also we allow her to bully us also right and then we make jokes about everything and that's how she overcame some of her sensitivity to being teased and everything. But also, I think she realized that, you know, over the years, you know, you actually trust the people who have stuck around. And and that we actually mean what we say, lah, you know. Huh, Steph? Yeah. Steph on water break, is it? No, no, Steph went to find another town to draw on. Yeah. So, Steph, laughter? Cure for all problems. But laughing really does help me, I feel. So, it's, for it me, helps. for me, the answer... Huh? It comes across all problems. I think yeah. for me, the answer is love and laughter. Yeah. Like, you know, you love laugh that less. person... <laughs> You love that you love that person, that's why you stick around what? I mean if you don't love that person, why you stick around? You like be gone. You too too conscient, too too free. Really. Okay, next question. Yeah, la, so that is the what is what will you do if this is the last chance? Ah? Mm. So the say something we have all covered, then what will you do? Take them out. What else? Still got what else? Uh? Enough with yeah, this question. <laughs> Still got what? Part, that person is. Two. Yeah, this is the part two. Uh. Part two B, two C, two D. Why we really answer? Uh? Take, take them out to, to lunch. Talk to them. That's it. Oh, how, what else you want? <laughs> That's Depression. it. Depression is not external, it's internal. The person must want to get better. Like you said just now, some people become too comfortable with their depression. And I had I had a point in time where I had that, that, that feeling also because it's comfortable and convenient. I've only known this feeling since I was like, what, 14? So might as well just stick with it, right? Because that's what's comfortable. But that's a very dangerous mindset to have. But only you can, you know, help yourself. You have people around you support you and be there for you, but you still must put in the hard work and the hard work. Yeah, so so you are not grateful for those people who stuck around with you, is it? Does that mean why does that why do you because it sounds that? No 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 because because you, all all the things that you have said so far point to it being a problem of the individual, which I'm saying is not um Yes, to an extent, it's an internal issue that you are facing or he or she is facing, right? But then, mm-hmm. what if what if intervention helps? And there's a reason why intervention is necessary also, right? You cannot, you cannot cure yourself only. I mean, yes, you can decide to be better. You can make decisions to improve and everything. But if the people around you are horrible people, you, it's very hard for you to improve. So it's, it's not just one person, lah. I mean, although yes, a lot of it is one person. Lah. But yeah. I think that one is the first step. Lah. They, mm. You uh, yourself, on the first step, okay. you must think that I want to be right. getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your decision. So you whatever you do next is based on this decision. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so if I, you do not have the intention to be getting better, then no one can help you. Yeah. Yeah, but see, uh, some of them, they don't get the intention to improve until much later, you know. Some people, when they are so depressed, uh, it also depends. La. I mean, some people, they 
feel like it's hopeless already, so you will never get better. And therefore, it's always going to be like that. Do you remember that, Steph? Yeah, that's the classic yeah. question. What's the point? Yeah, so, so basically, so basically, right, if, if you say that it's up to the individual only, then, then that is probably why uh, a lot of teens uh, decide to jump, you know? Like in Singapore recently, there was a period where every time you open a newspaper, it's like a teen committing suicide, you know? Because they feel that nobody is listening to them. They feel unloved. So I guess, although yes, to a big extent, it is a decision on your part uh, as an individual, but then if you knew someone who is suffering like that, you know, and then what, what will we do? Uh? Yeah. Like, like the last, you know, it's like, if, if, if let's say, if let's say this is the last thing you do for that person, what would, what, what would it be? Uh? Kind of. Yeah. You know? Although I'm not saying that you can completely always save the person. Uh. That's not what I'm saying. Uh. Because everyone is different. Uh, right. Yeah. I guess I guess also your answer can change over time because if let's say you have been depressed but then over the years you know you you have different bouts of depression over different things that that can be different as well you know like mm. your depression as a teen versus your depression as an adult versus depression over other things um and that can also influence your thought process lah mm, at what age will you yeah I think for me, I would probably speak mm. of my own experience. And then, because when I think I experienced depression, there was this feeling of no one knows what I'm feeling. So to, if I had someone to tell me like, hey, this is what I went through. Or like, your feelings to this situation is normal. But here's how you can, you know, make yourself feel better. Probably, you know. But I think that would have been beneficial for me. Just to hear someone's story. Yeah, but you see, if you don't open up first, the person will never tell you his or her story. Yeah, so that's your, what I will do. La. <laughs> your, correct, but but the, the person who is having the depression has to open up also. La, because a lot of the times, right, you will no, not know that the person is depressed. Mm. And if you don't know that person is depressed, you can't uh, adjust... Why... That's why it's a screwed up illness to have, right? Because by definition, it isolates you from the people you love and then it feeds you these thoughts where like nobody cares about you or you shouldn't be bothersome to other people. And so it makes you less likely to reach out to people around you. Even though so, you might have people around you that really truly care about you. And, correct. And, so in the end, you agree with me la, that you need to love the person. La. I never disagree with you. It was never... A point of contention. I just Why do you say like, as a point of in, contention though? In addition to what you said, I'm saying sometimes you, if like uh-huh. someone is experiencing long term depression and then they've tried talk therapy and they've tried all these things, maybe it's that there's chemical imbalances in your head and they really just have. Because just now I said you have to remind that you love the person. Then you nobody said no. <laughs> I never, I never <laughs> reject. Yo, oh, love, love. <laughs> we love, we love. Steph is, Steph is, yeah. Steph, are you sounding worried that I'll take the love back? No, no, you don't want to okay, take that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like small child, you, tr- you throw, you throw some more, I take away. No! <laughs> Keep it. Confiscate. Yeah, yeah. Confiscate. Yeah, yeah. Don't know <laughs> like how to take care of your umbrella. toys. Don't know how to take care of your toys. I keep. <laughs> like, like the stupid umbrella got confiscated in the museum. Thing. Well, at least you remember to bring it home later. <laughs> later, like, we go home. Oh, my umbrella! <laughs> oh, no, but, but the lady was very cute. So, the lady who so-called confiscated my umbrella confiscated. was also very sweet. She's like, Sorry. you don't forget to take, ah. Uh. Later, I remind you, ah. Uh. Then I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> she stick around just to remind you of your umbrella. Yeah, yeah, she did, she did, she did. Oh, she, she did try to Don't forget, like, don't forget umbrella. They are so cute, though. Is, yeah. it, is it got a lot of forgotten umbrellas? In, uh, in I don't know, but but I did tell her. Putting. I did tell her my my fear is to forget, you know. So maybe she one. responded to my fear. Poor, poor umbrella. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Poor umbrella. Yeah, so maybe you should look in the chat and see whether there are any more questions. No, no, no. 
Oh, scared away. Kangle is the big one. QDR, this one is Ugo. I-U-G-O. What tangle is the big one? Yeah. I love ball kind of tangle. Not all kind of tangle. Ball kind of <laughs> Ball kind of tangles. <laughs> Uni, very cute. Yeah. Ball kind of tangle. Yeah. You go. I-U-G-O. You go. You go. <laughs> Why? I want to stay. <laughs> Not allowed. Yeah. So, I guess, I guess trauma and depression, right? Why it's uh, good to talk about them like more is because this pandemic, right, has really isolated a lot of people, mm. uh, really changed a lot of people's lives, really put in more obstacles for people to cross. And I don't think we are the only ones, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like you say that it's not our duty, right, to be like... um. It's not our... I, I say it not from... I the, understand though. No, no, but I'm trying to clarify to other people. I yeah. say it not from the... the Go away, we don't care about yeah, you. Yeah, correct, correct. But it's more for... <laughs> if you have a loved one that's going through depression, you should not feel responsible for the emotions because if anything were to happen, a lot of people carry that guilt like, oh, I should have done more or what should I have said. But... No, Sometimes but even then, just... you will still have that guilt. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, but... You will still have that guilt. Perhaps, perhaps this will help lighten your burden, you know? Or if... No, if something had happened to you in those days when you were depressed, and I was still, like, yeah. trying to support you, yeah. I would still be feeling guilt. And I, I did tell you, like... I did tell you, like, after I had the depressive episode, like, wow, what you said, right? <laughs> but screw what you said, I would still be depressed. You, you, be depressed. you see, don't be because sad. you no, but you get what I'm trying to say. Huh? It's the very fact that you care about the person. That's why there's guilt. It's not oh you tell me not to feel giddy, I will not feel giddy. You you get what I'm trying to say, no? It's not. just then you tell me to feel happy, I also don't feel happy. <laughs> then that's your problem. I don't care already. QD, does this boss <laughs> hangle look like COVID? I'm starting to worry that I'm drawing Roblox things. Yeah. Oh dear. Maybe I shouldn't have drawn it this way. Turn it into something else, huh? Never mind. We will try to turn into yeah. video sun. No, but 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 why yeah, I'm clarifying for your sake is because I don't want people to get the wrong idea of the type of people we are. Go away. You go. Yeah. Yeah, you know? <coughs> because you see, uh, you will still feel guilt, uh, no matter what you say, you know, to that person. I mean, if somebody you love was so depressed that they cannot talk to you. And you found out about it. And you don't even know that the person is... Right. Of course, logically, you cannot be at fault, right? But will you still forget? You will, right? Because you are part of that person's circle. And you care about the person. So, okay. therefore, you will still be guilty. Huh, the, one time that I had, the one time that I had a friend who attempted... Like, he was clinically depressed with medication that he used to sell harm. When he attempted, I only remember feeling anger. This is also for context. This is when I was very young, so so you have to understand. Yeah, but you cannot anger. use that kind of analogy because you were very young, lah. Yeah, a lot of synapses not properly. Formed, it's very yeah. different. I yeah, remember, it's very different. I remember feeling very angry because I had saved his number as my favorite, so that even if my phone was on silent, his calls would still come through. But he didn't call anyone, and I remember feeling very angry because he's like. Here I am availing myself to you and then you're going to do something stupid. What if you had gone, you know? Yeah, so that's if he had... If that was because he failed. But if he had really gone, would you have felt guilt? Would you have felt guilt? You would, what? Because you didn't ask him how he was doing? No, no, I I was having active conversations with him, you see. So that's why Yeah, so then you would have felt guilt. Because the possibility is there. It's kind of like, okay. it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, you never ask Hush how she's doing, right? If something happened to her, will you forgive yourself? Oh. Huh? Sally with, but with if something telling happened everyone. To her, <laughs> well, I'm using a, a liars. Yeah. We're using Fair aliases. Enough. So, Fair enough. Fair so, enough. Yeah. But you get what I'm saying, no, Steph? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if something happened to me, and you didn't bother about asking about me, but something happened to me. Will you feel guilt? It would, wah. It's just a natural human, li- like human feeling, lah. Be yeah, psychopathic, you know. Then what? You're like, hey, 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 <laughs> good. Jian- I can keep this her. This is the Yeah, you can keep her un and harass her. <laughs> okay, <sighs> let's like it now. Okay. Come next question. We spend a lot of time on this. We finished really. That's the finish. Oh, finish really. Because oh, okay. because it's a joint question. Remember, I told you. 
Okay, I thought it's a joint question. question. Yeah. Well, well, you can always ask us another question if you want. Oh, really? <laughs> That's related or not? Susan, I think we have time for have, one more actually. Have you have you had any sad friends that that had struggle with yes with depression? I hope you just Were didn't you? tell them to to watch the excavator and stuff like that. No la, that one is just an example. I don't. Cannot, that one cannot. That one cannot go public. Uh, okay? Next time, next time, next time, that cannot, cannot, cannot say public. example and anymore. Excuse me, man. You no, 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 no. Forever. No, that one cannot go public. That one forever. very embarrassing. Go be like a three year old, like 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 Isaac, and watch the. Yes, <laughs> excavator. Tell, telling something by giving example is easier to understand. That's why mm. the excavator come. Yeah, but but I never not... ask bring my friends to try to <laughs> go distract them by oh, asking for God. excavator. <laughs> thank God. <sighs> were you in their okay. direct circle when, when they were going through their depression? Because sometimes it's a friend a, of a friend. Mm, you know? Sometimes mm, it's, it's really I have friend. a friend that they really, she, she went through the depression since 18. Mm. Then uh, we are. Um, I, I don't think we we contact each other very often. But I don't know why she trusts me. So even there's a time that her her <laughs> Your her therapist calm. telling her her therapist telling them that you need to keep. In mind that maybe uh one or two person in your mind. If let's say one day you find that you cannot can continue anymore. You must mm. call these two person before you make any uh, bad decision. So you, you need to call them, then wait until wait until they answer your call. If no they didn't answer your call, you cannot do anything else. Yeah, I think this is something like try to to protect that person so that the therapist believe that once you talk to someone, it will kind of like um Give yeah, you some encouragement or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is so very stress when, when that you she, are the person. She, uh yeah, she she told, told me that I'm you the are. the second person in the list. So, so, so that means so that means every time she call you have to go to answer. Uh. No la she never so far she never no, called me in that situation. That, but my point is that if yeah. she ever call you, you must answer. No, but the therapist uh, yeah, doesn't ever that, answer. Just like, then she cannot do anything. Mm. Ayo, I tell you, uh, I don't trust Susan you anymore. She's a con person. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you imagine if she's my lifeline and I call, she don't pick up? It's not safe, but then she, she has to up. wait until I pick up. Uh. Yeah, but if yeah. she don't because call me she... back and don't pick up, then how? She will call back. Be no, because... When That's just when you when you when you appoint someone to be an emergency contact person, you cannot hundred percent tell that person saying that I will assure yeah. you I will answer your call immediately whenever you call. People got lies. Yeah, cannot my, be right. You know, I'm not asking you assure her. I'm just saying that you don't answer, then then the person will be you know like well, oh, anyway. No, she, she will so try hard. again. She will try again. Okay, so that mean? until she contact me, reach me, then mm. yeah, really, so I think this. In my mind, I trust Susan Yeo so much, but she don't even answer my call. People got life to live, lah. Come like that. No, la. but I'm depressed. So if I am depressed and I have all of these things going on, right? I need, I need support from Susan Yeo, but she don't want to pick up my call. That's why. That's why the therapy say until she pick up. No, that's why mm. the therapy say need two persons. You think you sway them? Yeah, yeah. People don't pick up. Then I don't know how to. Because but if let's say the two 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 person <laughs> never, if let's say the that two person really didn't pick up, then she have to wait until someone pick up the phone. Yeah, mm. but it's good so it, it's it's kind come. of like delay. It, it it's kind of a a method to delay, delay their yeah. decision. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because so this is that when when I heard heard she sharing about this one, I said, eh, yeah, this is a good idea. Trust me. Ah! To be you, uh, to pick you. Uh, no, 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 no. no I you, mean the you suggestion from... <laughs> the therapy is good. Oh, from wait, not the ther- <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. The, the, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the therapist is good. The therapist is good. Is Susan, you're the choice, no good. Why? Okay, I mean, then I good. ask her to, to pick Debbie. <laughs> so Very good. She don't trust I you. Introduce I introduce her to you. She only trusts you, so you should you should be the one. <laughs> This one is the Tian Xiao. Ah, Susan. Ah. Today so is my turn. Hi. 
But it's true, uh, if, if you know that you're an emergency contact of someone, you can bring yourself to ignore the call. Uh. You can't. Uh. It's not ignore. Uh, no, it's not really going to ignore. Uh, but well, it is, meeting, it uh, is. Okay, if, if I know, okay, if I know that I'm the emergency contact of Stephanie, right? Mm. You go and ask Stephanie how many times I pick up her phone in the middle of the night and then she's crying. I think she cannot remember also, you know? Mm, I can't remember. Fun yeah, she can't remember, you know? Amnesia. She, you know, uh, you know, she can call me on the phone and start crying, ah, uh, and I'm like, huh, what, what, what happened? And I'm like, I'm like, do I? Then sometimes, ah, uh, when she's crying so badly, Can't I don't co- even know incoherent. what's going on. I, I don't even dare to ask her what's going on, you know. <laughs> Better not to know. Yeah. So you 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 go and ask Stephanie how many times I drop everything that I'm doing just to answer her phone call. But I'm we're saying more in the sense that if let's say you, I, I Susan, don't want to be your emergency contact now. Susan is is I, I busy you doing. Susan. I ah, also can. <laughs> Susan, <laughs> I know you down. Who is my emergency? I think my mom. My mom my emergency contact. Like, in my phone. Okay, then if you call me, I'm going to reject. Ah, can. You're, you're all in my favourite, so y'all can call me if you want. Oh, answer. Hello? At 3 a.m. But it's good that Susan bring I think Susan, Susan tapped out already. She's yeah, Susan's like, already. this is full rubbish. <laughs> this is mega nice. Me out. <laughs> no, but Susan, bring it back, bring it back to what you're saying and Less nonsense. Um, it's good that the person didn't call you, like you know, it means that throughout yeah. the years, <laughs> either the first person very hardworking or yeah, I think so. Eh. She... then Susan got away with it, you know. Maybe or maybe <laughs> just she she found better coping mechanism mechanism, but then didn't need to yeah. like, call anyone. <laughs> So funny. So this is like uh, <laughs> 没有消息就是好消息 mm. 哎呀跟你开玩笑啦 这样sensitive But we, we, we still We still, we still yeah, uh, uh, Contact talk. each other right oh, okay. Instead of calling uh, We're messaging Calling the heart attack You could ask Steph uh, How many times she tried Tried her Midnight calls Scary The best thing is She don't even remember her now Mm, very good. Traumatizing. So I throw mm. yeah. Then, then, so, yeah. then were you very stressed when Susan, when the person said, I, I put you down as my emergency contact? At first, I, I, I was a bit stressed, but when I heard that it's, there's two person, they said, oh, okay, that's good. Yo. Because we really cannot, we, we cannot guarantee that I anytime I can pick up the call. So once mm. you f- found that there's another person, yeah, not not the responsibility is not lying on one person, then you are not that stressed. Mm. Then the the second thing I answer to him, I hope that you won't call me. I don't. Oh. I hope that you have have no the do not have the opportunity to call but me you, in this but kind when of you reason. Say, correct, but when you say like that, uh, the person may feel like you don't want you know. So then no then, la, uh, We are so we are so close that so when we I, I talk about this thing is kind of like really relax yeah. Mm. So this kind of sayings is not if that I, everyone you can that say to, in this that way. Correct. If I say that to Stephanie, I think she will start crying also. Why? The I last time anything. last time version of Stephanie. Yeah. Not now. Uh. Progress. I'm saying at that at that point in time, if I told Stephanie that, then she will be very upset with me. Uh. So yeah. to close this session, give it time. Yes. A lot of things can change with time. Okay, shall we but, close but this it's, session? It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so closing, closing. I feel that if anybody out there who is listening to this ridiculousness coming from us, yes, we are ridiculous, but if you really need somebody to talk to and you really don't have anyone to talk to, you can actually text Susan. us. Uh, I, I cannot say call us because we are probably in a different time zone. Uh, and if you call us, most likely, um, we won't be able to answer. But if you text us or you email us, I think we, we chances are we, we've been responding to people like that anyway, so we will respond to you. And, and we won't, uh, well, we, well, we will joke about each other, la, but we won't joke about your case. La. We will disturb Susan Yeo and Stephanie, but we won't disturb your case. Yeah. So you don't have to worry that we give your details away or anything like that. <coughs> right? Okay. Right or not? Okay, we do closing. Yes. Not right. Ayo. Yes. <laughs> okay, come. What house you all do? Baby, <sighs> do you want to go first? No. 
Shit, I will go first then. <laughs> Susan, you want to go first? What are you doing? What are you up to? Yeah. Oh, I've two done two pages. Yeah. Oh. This is the size of the, I think the size of the apprentice towels. Uh, so this is the first page that with the camera two. Mm. With, okay, mm, the F, me. I don't think it's very really clear, but it's okay lah. Can see it if you see the yeah. pencil. Yeah, can see it. Yeah. Okay. Then the second page is uh, I draw another tangles as a background, then use some colors, and another camera. Are they the are they meant to be mm. two pages together or is it one page one page? Ah, uh, one page. Oh. Is a uh, uh, can I say that? So they're not connected. Uh, they are connected. Oh, they're, they're connected. connected. Okay. Mm. Like book. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. are connected, lah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, my first tile was done on Strathmore paper. It's a dark blue color. I use silver for Camry. And then I added, what's this tangle? Nemeo and flux. And then shading was done with white watercolor pencils and silver watercolor pencils. And also a bit of black for the dark shading. And then I added a bit of details in silver jelly rolls and then this second house Debbie I finished your tongue see I copy but yours and mine look slightly different but still so good I use Epsidus and then I like cambric with an aura she didn't look very nice why you praise yourself of course must praise yourself must I copy it and it looks so good oh my god I, say, I said it don't look the same but it still look good Okay, <laughs> then last one is from a project pack. Uh, Yugo was already there and then it had a string cutting it off. So I thought to draw Canby over there. And then I added Epsidus as the second radio tangle. And then I'll add one more tangle inside here. Yeah, and then we'll see how it goes. I might bring this page back next week. Yeah, what about you, Debbie? So, actually, I have two magical uh, tinted tiles. I like this one better. Uh, I think the mica is a lot better on this one. But I don't think I'm finished, you know. I feel like it's lacking something. So, we'll see how this one goes. I, well, I just did very basic tangling on this one. And then I just added white shading. Um, my white shading, I'm thinking of whether to activate or not because it's a, uh, I don't know if you can see, it's a, uh, it's actually a watercolor pencil. So I'm not sure if I will activate it or whether it will disappear when I activate it. But then this other one has so much mica that it was a challenge uh, to draw. And I made a lot of mistakes on this tile. So I'm not very proud of it, but I'll try and make the best out of it lah. Yeah, and I did try to dilute it a little bit. I added water, I added a uh, coil brush, but it just wouldn't budge. It's like there's just too much mica in it. So this, yeah. Coil brush, but you don't budge. Mm, not funny. Mm. Mm. I see. Mm. Any more? No more. Okay. So today we used an S-shaped string with the tangle cam read by uh, DCZT, here are the step outs. Susan has also posted uh, a post on her Instagram and also in the 7F5R challenge group on Facebook. If you tangle along with us, do post your tiles in the group. You can also uh, post your tile on Instagram with the hashtag 7F5R challenge so that we can find your tiles. A uh, recording of today's session will be made available on 7F5R Studios Instagram page at 7F5Rivers and also in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash 7F5R Studio. Uh, we'll each post our tiles in our personal pages on Instagram. Debbie is at tangled.pursuits, Susan is at susanyo.czt and I'm at halfpen underscore ultra. Thank you so much for tangling along with us. We hope to see you again next week on Wednesday, 2.45pm. It would be the 5th of October, 2022. And by then, uh, we'll be doing Inktober Tangles. Yeah. So we hope to see you then. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.